Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler Friday Fishing Report. We're filming for March 5th. Thank God we're into March. Uh, so if it's nowhere near March 5th, click up here. This is a link to all the Friday Fishing Reports, and we do it most weeks, so I should have something up to date for you. When I say thank God it's March, it's because we're gone with February. February is probably one of the worst months for fishing around the lower mainland because it's usually cold, it's usually low water, and those are two very bad things for river fishing. And I mean, just getting out in the salt water can be a challenge when things are snowing or hailing sideways on you. It looks like March is going to be better in that regard. And March overall is usually a month of transition and definitely one you want to consider fishing on. If you've maybe been holding back all winter hiding inside, why? Well, as the temperature increases, a bunch of the species wake up, turn on, their metabolisms kick in, and we also see some food sources become more uh, prevalent that these fish can target. And what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of the smaller fish that live in our river systems become active, as well as salmon fry begin to hatch. Hasn't happened yet, we're going to talk about that when I talk about the Squamish section. I was up last week, have some details there. We're also going to talk about the Vedder. There was a massive slide on the Vedder. Half the world decided to fall into the Vedder River and turn it into absolute chocolate milk. Uh, good news is it came back in shape quickly. Bad news is if you pee on that side hill, it's probably going to go back to chocolate milk. So it's something you're going to have to pay close attention to if you're planning to get out. And I'm sure we're going to have more details in the written version as it comes closer to the weekend. So you'll make sure you want to check that out. I've also got a cool science piece on some seals. If you've heard fishermen complain about seals, they're not always right. But there is a major concern in the Georgia Strait right now of seal numbers. And I've got some science for you that is very specific, that is undeniable, and I think very important uh, contributing factor to declines in fish populations throughout the area. I'm going to talk about that at the back end of the report. Last but not least, we've got a video for you. It's the video we released last week, but I think it's important to bring it up. Zach did a really cool one on fly tying glues. He compared a bunch of them, and this is something we've known for years, but it's really cool to see them all together. You can actually change the look and color of your fly just by changing the glue that you use. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that video at the back end of the report as well as leave links to it because I think all fly tires should check it out. As always, guys, you wanna see more reports like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into her. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank God it's March. Uh, it might look a little bit different. We changed things around. Alex stole my nice big computer, so I'm running off this guy now, but it should work for you guys. If this is flickering, I apologize. I haven't got my frame rates correct on the new monitor. So weather-wise, that's the big one, is we might see uh, an 11 degree Thursday, Friday uh, as, as we're doing this report. Now, you'll see this Friday, but that could mean good things for the weekend. Um, obviously, we need to see water temperatures warm up. Um, we also need to see most of our river levels jump up a little bit, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we are going to see some rain, 10 to 15 here in Vancouver, some more out the valley, some more out Squamish Way. But overall, the river levels can take it. The vetter may not be able to take it. Uh, this slide happened last week. It did come back into shape extremely quickly, but one of the worst mud up slides that I've seen in a long time. And obviously the fishing was a major challenge, guys trying to stay ahead of the chocolate milk, uh, but it did come into shape and it provided some fishing this week as we're filming Tuesday, Wednesday. And so it'll be interesting to see what this rain does to the side hill that is very, very unstable right now. So just keep an eye on it, be prepared for dirty water presentations, even though the water level may not be that high. Now on the saltwater front, we've still been hearing some good saltwater stuff. Uh, guys have been out, the seals have been a problem. We're gonna talk about the biology side in a bit. Uh, and also many of you guys are asking about regulations. I'm not gonna get into detail about that. I was hoping I could have more information this week, but know that information should be coming very, very soon. And we're crossing our fingers that the biology, the scientific fact is going to dictate the decisions that the minister makes. 
And if she doesn't, we are going to hold her very, very accountable. Always check out the written version of the report for the most up-to-date information when it comes to that, as well as the Public Fisheries Alliance Facebook page. Get on that if you aren't already. The most up-to-date politics stuff you'll find there. Now, with biology in mind, I wanted to share this talk with you. I'm gonna leave links down in the description below in big letters, the SEAL talk, uh, because it's super important. Uh, as a overview, the populations of seals have increased dramatically over the last eight to 10 years. And there is some fairly compelling, solid scientific evidence that contributes a number of the salmon and steelhead population declines to the presence of seals. Now, if you haven't heard this, it's actually, funnily enough, not the seals targeting adult fish. It's mostly the seals targeting the early stages of the fish's life cycle, which is a little off-putting, thinking of a huge seal eating small to little fish. Uh, but the data that they're getting is fairly overwhelming and paints a really, really concerning picture, but also something maybe we can work with and maybe have management programs that can push things in the correct direction to protect the stocks of concern. Links down in the description. If I can link it up here, I will. Please check it out if you want to get a little biology fishing fix. All right, on to Zach's video. He does super glue, two kinds of super glue. Kind of proves that they're the same. Again, if there's any uh, glue geeks out there that think they're different, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Uh, he also does your classic nail polish style uh, finishes, which are great. There's actually some cool comments on the video about some nail polish stuff, how to thin it up and how to change its viscosity, which I thought was cool. Thanks for the comments there, guys. And then obviously our UV resins. We might want to do more of these styles of videos in the future, but if you're a fly tire and you've ever wondered what super glue looks like versus hard as hull versus a UV resin, this is a video worth checking out. All right, I think that's everything I've got for you guys. I'm gonna be coming back with more stuff next week or maybe the week after, depending on how the schedule goes. Uh, I'm out fishing next weekend, so everyone getting out, good luck. If you wanna see Zach's video, I'm going to link it right there. And I'll put some more fun fly tying stuff here if you guys are interested. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll catch you next week.